come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, boils and ghouls, freakazoids. Thanks for joining us on the Saturday Night yes. Freak Show. I don't yes, like it. I don't like freakazoids. It. I, don't I love like it. it. I so love there's it. like a warring thing here now. It's I just don't like great. it. Wasn't there a cartoon where the meme? That's the what I'm saying. Okay, the so Freakazoid. We, here we go. We got to drop the. It's a Warner Brothers thing. cartoon. I don't think it works. Uh, it's like, a pur- like a purple thing. Yeah. yeah, he's got like the black hair that goes back, the red jumpsuit, and he's the Freakazoid. Yep. Freakazoid. Copyrighted. Uh, yeah, I yeah we Whatever. can't use it. They come up with another name for. I don't listeners. think they need it. We've gone two hundred and something episodes, and they haven't needed one. Why do they need one now? Because I won't. And if it's the f- part of fandom is that you don't decide what your fans are called; they decide what they're called. Yeah, and one of them suggested freak as well. He's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to say welcome back to you, fans, uh, oils and ghouls. There we go uh, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. So, uh, if you're just stumbling upon us for the first time we're a movie review well we talk about movies right we oh, said yeah. it's like a book club for movies we, we sit around it. yeah we watch a movie and then we talk about it mm-hmm. for your listening pleasure mm-hmm. and uh you can find us on itunes you can find us on stitcher you can find us on tune in or anywhere that podcasts are found i think at this point is cast roller back yet I don't think they bring so, it back. but I'm hoping that whatever you do, take the time to go and give us a review, a star rating, a like, or subscribe, because all of that stuff kind of helps us get discovered by other folks uh, like-minded like you. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we would appreciate it. Become Please. part of Please. the Freak Show family. Uh, and also, you can find us on uh, on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can follow us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. Brandon. And I'm Colin. Welcome, Brandon. Hey, Welcome. what's up? Hey, this Brandon. is my fourth time. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Brandon and he's is. already making demands. <laughs> I'm just saying that one of these times I am going to have to choose a goddamn movie. <laughs> All these people have to have had to go through this, like the trial to get to. Mm-hmm. So did you sit here for whole long? You're not even. Did you sit here for hot? No. You're not even in the five times. Did you sit here for repo? No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, neither did I. <laughs> That's true. But you, you, endured, you went you through the trials. You said it for uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And Metal Storm. And yeah. uh, only God forgive. And my boyfriend's back. Um, oh, shit. We all yeah. picked bad ones. Snap. <laughs> I haven't been able to pick a one yet. <laughs> and you're so only many, here for the good ones, though. Good ones so, floating yeah. around. Yeah. So many awesome <laughs> ones. You're lucky. Uh, I mean, aren't they, wait, aren't they all Colin's picks that you've been here for? No, one was a uh, Travis pick. Uh, oh, okay. Because oh, you're yeah, deconstructing yeah. Harry. You're right. Oh, yeah. right, right. That right, was the first right. one I did. The second one I did was Lamora. Oh, yeah. That one. Lamora. Which is Collins. The Lady Dracula. Tale the third of, one. The child's Tale of the Supernatural. Was What was the third one? We had a hard Creep time. Creep show. You heard Night of the Creeps. Yes. Night of the Creeps. Night of the Creeps. Right. Night of the Creeps. That's what I was going to say. That's we had a hard time it. figuring this out last time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Night of the Creeps. Now you can go back and check out Brandon's uh, best okay, episodes. Colin's picks. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, what? Who who chose tonight mo- tonight's movie? Colin! <laughs> you chose tonight's movie. I did. What did we watch? Well, tonight we watched a movie called Black Sabbath. Directed by who? Mario Bava. From the year? 1963. Damn. Who is Mario Bava, Colin? Uh, Mario Bava is a renowned, I think, Italian horror film director. Uh, I think usually when you think of Italian horror, there's like Dario Argento. He's obviously. the first name everybody thinks of. of yeah, because he's still alive. What about Fellini? At horror movies? Not horror movies. I'm saying Italian. Right. Italian. He's probably so Fellini's like the go-to. He's right. the go-to I think so. That's yeah. where all the, the highfalutin people yeah. are just like uh, cinema Fellini. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the one they think. <laughs> what about Roberto Benini? That's more recent, right? Yeah, but is he still working? I don't like think he won the Oscar. I don't was know. Life is beautiful. That was uh, yeah. like what, like 1998? Yeah, when he jumped oh, up like, on, he jumped on the seats, seats yeah, and ran across them to the stage. I mean, I don't know. I'm just. He's, yeah, he's I, like uh, the famous Italian countryman. Yeah, uh, f- film in the film uh, uh, directors. Uh, we Pietro Pasolini. No, I don't know. We're throwing this out. The uh, in the horror film genre, yes. there's Dario Argento. 
uh, Mario Bava and Lucio Fulci are usually mm, like Fulci the three is. that you go to, and there's several other guys after that. But I think these guys are the ones who are <laughs> generally credited with. Right. Uh, Everyone else is like a descendant of them, yeah, basically. I think so, <laughs> right? Because like nobody else is really. I don't think they're bringing new stuff to the. You know, like who did Cannibal Holocaust? Yeah, uh, was that Regerto Rigger, Deodato? Deodato? Yes. Yeah, I think just recently Ruggiero passed away. Deodato? Ruggiero, yeah, it's two Gs. Ruggiero. Ruggiero? Ruggiero. I can't pronounce his name. I know who you are, man, but I can't pronounce your name. There's Umberto Lenzi. There's Lamberto Bava. There's Umberto. like, you know, all these guys <laughs> who Umberto directed uh, all these films over the years. Uh, Mario Bava is, I think... Probably the most technically proficient the guy who worked in the most genres. I mean, okay. Fulci went, worked in a bunch of genres too, but uh, Bava, um, you know, I mean, like the, there's a movie that he did called A Bay of Blood, which we got here as Twitch of the Death Nerve. Ooh, which is a great that's a good, uh, that's a good title. Bitch and name. Yeah. <laughs> but it was the first, it was a movie, so I think it was uh, late 60s, early 70s, um, where it had uh, two people, while they were having sex, got impaled from behind. Mm. That was lifted pretty much exactly like that for Friday the 13th yeah. Part 2. That's credited as being like one of the proto uh, slasher movies. It's people around a lake that are being, you know. Nice. Uh, he also... Inve- is credited with inventing the Giallo uh, film, which basically Dario Argento made his entire career off of the black glove mm-hmm. killer with a knife. Yeah. Um, Bava made, I think, which is now being called the first one. It's called The Girl Who Knew Too Much, which uh-huh. is a play on Hitchcock's The Man Who Knew Too Much. Uh, it stars John <laughs> and the Saxon. Spy who knew too little. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like a black and white movie. And so then the next thing, I think, in that evolution is probably... There's a little bit of Black Sabbath, the, the telephone story. Yeah. Uh, kind of gives you the the style of the giallo. So if you take those two and put them together, you end up with Dario Argento's The Bird of the Crystal Plumage, which is like where the genre actually really starts, I think. Yeah, Mary did show up in Black Gloves, and I was just like, ooh, Yeah, I know. There's that scene where she opens yeah. the drawer and gets yeah. the knife on. I'm like, that's Dario Argento's yeah, entire I've seen career. that before in somebody's, uh, <laughs> a certain somebody's filmography, the Black Gloves opening the drawer and whatnot. There's I may have played. Some, there's some more stuff from, <laughs> from that certain movie character that we might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that you? That was me. Yeah. In several, <laughs> this is a, a short film that you can find mm, uh, yes. both Sean's work and my work in uh, called Slit. Mm-hmm. It's on uh, on YouTube. It's a giallo. Yes. That we did in tribute to please some of these, check uh, it out Italian filmmakers. So Brandon comes to us from uh, a podcast called Sock Monkey Sound. They talk about music. So as our resident music expert, is that too too far to go? Uh, the guy with the, the to him. knowledge. I would say I more so than the rest of us. I could, I I could school everybody in this room. <laughs> yeah, music. probably. Right. Well, That's yeah. good enough for me. So Black Sabbath might have another meaning to musically inclined uh, uh, listeners. <laughs> uh, yeah. Probably. When, 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 what, what year was this movie? That should have been it. 1963. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 1963, so before the yeah. first yes. Black Sabbath yeah, record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's been like a term for like a long time, right? I mean, it's been like a devil-worshipping yeah. term. Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Yeah. And whatnot. But would you be surprised to know that this is where they got their name? Oh, is this where I they would, got it from? I would not be surprised at <laughs> all. Nice. Well, like the that. story that I heard was that Ozzy and the guys were like at re- recording and they were playing somewhere and they went outside and they were across the street was a theater that was playing Black Sabbath. You know, I don't know. This is... That's and the, the story rest that, is yeah. history. And the rest is history. And, and were boom. they playing the English version, Colin? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. So... Tonight we watched uh, the Italian, the original Italian version of this movie, which is not called Black Sabbath. It's called The Three Faces of Fear. Mm. Uh, when it was imported to the United States by uh, American International Pictures, they recut the movie, rescored the movie, and titled it Black Sabbath. I would argue The Three Faces of Fear is a much better, I think it's a more, better accurate, more accurate, accurate portrayal. Did, did more accurate for sure, yeah. Did the B- Americans who acquired movies in like the 60s and 70s just, what did they like about foreign cinema if they just brought them all over, recut them, renamed them, and put them out? Like, what were the, well, 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 we like this, let's fuck up everything about it, or let's alter it some way just to make it different. Well, like, why, why was there this fascination with recutting and renaming these things? I mean, I think you still see that in cinema to sure. an extent. 
I mean, there'll be different cuts things for different countries. Definitely. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, besides just like China having like you can't add a lot of some things aren't allowed to play. Yeah, there. no ghosts in China. They don't like that. Well, I think that's basically it. Except at the time, it was more like the American market was uh, more conservative than the European market. So when they would bring stuff here, they would say, "Well, we have to kind of tone this down, or we got to, you know, uh, change this." So, I mean, maybe we can talk about these changes as we get into the stories. But uh, so there's three stories in this: uh, the telephone, uh, the Vertilac. And the drop of water. It's an uh, anthology Vertilac. movie, right? <laughs> yes. An anthology horror movie. Um, it's not necessarily the first one, but it's among you know the first of this type of. When thing. was uh, Tales from the Crypt? Uh, the comic? No, 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 the movie that we watched in the seventies. Was the seventies okay? Yeah, there was one called The Dead of Night in the late fifties or early sixties. I forget, but that I think was one of the acknowledged first. We watched an anthology before on the show. What was it? Tales from the Crypt. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was. Travis brought one. Yeah, Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Was it? Yep. Yeah, it was uh, the English one with the the people go down in the in the crypt, and there's a crypt keeper down there, and they each get told Fucking a story. Hell, you're about right. How they, yeah. Yeah. Yep, you're right. Like the crypt keeper or a crypt. Keeper. Like the it's it's based the on original, the original the original right. crypt keeper. Like the comics, it wasn't like not like <laughs> right. Yes, it wasn't him. Not the character of <laughs> yeah. It's just a guy in like a monk's robe, yeah, you know, down in the in in the smelly crypt. Um, uh, not not to not to bring to something that we already talked about and are done with. But do you think the uh, you just want to talk about Lamora more, don't you? No, okay. <laughs> do you black think like Sabbath. the the black glove that you were talking about? Do you think it has anything to do with uh, the the black hand terrorist organization? That was in Italy and Serbia around that time. Oh. Or earlier than that. Well, the hmm. the generally accepted way of how these things got going was uh, giallo means yellow, I guess, in, in Italy. There were a bunch of um, paperback novels, Agatha Christie, Edgar Wallace, you know, Arthur Conan Doyle, Edgar Allan Poe, for all I know. I mean, like the, uh, the they would call them creamy. I think in German uh, they were creamy, but they were crime thrillers, basically. And they were all printed by a company called Mon- Mondadori. Creamy as in C-R-I-M-E. K-R-I-M-I. Okay. Crime, you, crime like, thrillers. Not, right? not like creamy. <laughs> not creamy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Crime. I don't know. Yeah. 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 But since they were all painted or, or printed on these books that had yellow covers, they just, you know, they call them informally the giallos. Ah. And then when they started making these movies, uh, you know, just a whodunit. So it's basically the idea that you're trying to dis- d- disguise whether it's a man's hand or a woman's hand. That's what hand. I figured. So yeah. it's just a black glove. No, I knew I was stretching. I was just curious yeah. because I know that was. But again, we don't know. We weren't uh, Italian filmmakers of that era. That's so true. It's quite possible. Wasn't that the name of the group of the. Of the the dude that killed Archduke Franz Ferdinand to start World War One <laughs> was part of the Black Hand. Oh, it I sounds familiar. So. I've heard the Black Hand before. I'll look it up later I think because so. my phone doesn't get. Was that they were like <laughs> they would leave their mark with the like was it an ink thing or something like that? The no? I think it was just a name. Just the name, the Black Hand. That's uh, yeah. I like it's cooler if they just left a black hand. Yeah. It wasn't like the White Hand, like Lord of the Rings. I was gonna bring up the <laughs> as a White Hand. There's, yeah, a sorry, hand, there's a hand outfit oh. in uh, Daredevil, right? Isn't that the hand? And then that became oh, the Teenage hand, yeah. Ninja Turtles, the oh, yeah. foot. Yeah. The foot. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's right. Bring Very it all true. around. That's right. Very <laughs> true. A history lesson. Travis would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so when they brought the movie over, to your question, Sean, they yes. uh, re-edited it for both content and uh, to f- make a more focus on their star, which was Boris Karloff, mm-hmm. who played Frankenstein, obviously, back in the day. And this is older Boris Karloff. Yes. Uh, and... Uh, they reordered the stories. So if you see the AIP version, it begins with the drop of water, then the telephone, and it ends with the Boris Karloff centerpiece, the Vertilac. Okay, I was going to say, because he does the intro, and then they don't go to it. Mm-hmm. He intros the Vertilac, right. and because then they he, go to a different story. In the intro, he mentions it's going like, to be more than one tale, right. and then he like dives deep into a 
vampires. Yeah. 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 And then the first one, I'm like, oh, there's no, I, was, I, I kept waiting for that. The, the first sequence was like, well, there's no goddamn vampire. Like, this doesn't vampire. look like a vampire story. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The expectation. They also reshot all of his uh, intros for the American one. So the, oh, really? the intros that we saw, you know, the That's bumper stuff here yeah. isn't what's on the American one. Oh. So you have seen the American version if you've ever caught this movie on TV or Netflix. Have not. If you've seen it on video or on Shutter, where it's streaming right now, you're seeing the Italian one. Ooh, I might go check it out on Netflix. So is there yeah. a version, because clearly when they filmed this, they're speaking English. Yes. Is there a version that it's the Italian cut in English? No. That sucks. Uh, that's the problem. That sucks. Otherwise, yeah. that would be probably the preferred version yeah. if they get all the dubbing from the... But they've the uh, music has been changed, and so that's worked right. into the... There's no separation of audio and music track for the, mm-hmm. right. the American version. Sure. So in the version we watched, the telephone is the first story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Illinois telephone. And this the Italian <laughs> version then kind of works its way toward the best story at the end, where the American one puts the best story at the beginning. That's my preference, anyway. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. think, yes. So I kind of think the American one's, like, blowing its load too early, and then you're like, well, that was awesome. Like, what's going to happen next? And like, uh, 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 where this one kind of, like, you know, ramps you up toward uh, the drop of water. I would oh, argue... drop of water was the best one? Oh, you hands down. What did you think was the best one? Don't say the Fertilac, because that one I like was the telephone. tough. The telephone was fine. I liked that one. The Fertilac was just kind of ridiculous. And oh, it, it may, just... me may lean towards that one, <laughs> just because it was fun. I don't know. Hmm. It was also a significantly longer, I think. Like, yeah, it's like, like a mini movie. Yeah, well, it was pretty long. long. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's pretty long. 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah that's like a that. long one. And it, had, it suffered from some of those, like... But it had stinka. Fairy tale <laughs> tropes of, like, I just met you and I'm in love. I'm in love. We should run off together and be mad. It was so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's what I loved about it. When you get to stuff like this, like, the more ridiculous, the better. I honestly thought that a, the drop of water and the telephone did a better job of actually creating suspense for me. Sure. Agreed. As opposed yes. to the Vertilac was just like, oh, this is just like a story. The Vertilac was like one of those horror movies I put on like on Netflix and where I just want to take like a nap. Yeah. <laughs> where the other two actually held some like kind of Hitchcockian suspense. I'm a, mm-hmm. I might like the, the Vertilac because it... Uh, it's uh, it what's feels a Vertilac, by the way, for people out there? A vampire, I guess. There you go, yeah. A term yes. for a vampire that I've never <laughs> like seen. Russian also, or something, right? Does, Turkish I, was it Turkish? It they, was, they killed a, a Turk in it. Yeah, yeah, a Turk was, the Turk was wandering yes. around in Russian territory, right. and they can Alabek, yes. Oh, the, yes, Alabek. Um, speaking of uh, it being a vampire, is the cover of this. Uh, Blu-ray I'm looking at right now, uh, a liar? Because I don't remember vampire teeth in this movie. Uh, I think that's one of the foreign posters. Okay, it's I was not the say, American there's no vampire poster, teeth but... in the Fertile Act. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that. But they're trying to set up, obviously, the, the vampire. Sure. Vampire is big deal. So the... I, I was going to say, I think I lean towards it because it's got that more kind of like, that older kind of like stage lighting and just kind of the whole look of it, I liked more than the other ones. It was more. Oh, it looks like a really well done, like. Well, that's what I think. That's what I liked about theater it. College theater, but it always it does. community yeah. college theater. Right. Yeah. Well, well, the lighting of these things it always reminds me of. I'm always reminded like of yeah. like um, attractions I used to go to, like at Universal Studios back in the sure. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The haunted yeah. castle or the, haunted. I yeah. love it, that there's shit. all the fog and yeah, it's the fog, and then they just like you go by a bush, and some of it is in with that red light. I would say just different colored can yeah. lights, like. There's a red one and then a blue yes, one. Yes, you know, it's just, yes. Very dirty. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Like, we're shooting in color, damn it, and they're going to know. Yes. Because exactly. we're going to have different colored gel lights exactly. all over That the may place. be why I lean towards that, because just I love the way that looks. Yeah, it has a, it's like gothic horror. Yes. Yeah? I like that. I would just argue that it didn't fit with the trilogy. With the other two. Yeah, probably not. Agreed. It's also the one that's probably more, uh, the most fantastical out of the three. Sure. Definitely. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's, it's a period piece. Yeah, for sure. yeah. I guess <laughs> technically all three of these were for us. It's very well, yeah. that's very true. I think the telephone yeah. was fairly had to be fairly modern in nineteen in the nineteen. Probably that was it the looked most like straightforward the 60s. one. Yeah. yeah, that one looked like the sixties, and it had like a yeah. kind of a mod or what would you how would you call it bossa nova score? Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, and they were definitely wearing like sixties like hip clothing. Like Mary came yeah, like that green yeah. like two piece thing with a really high skirt. It was very like boxy and modular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Well, maybe we should set these up. You want to do it individually for the folks at home? We'll talk about each story, uh, sure. or just probably. I think that would probably be the best. best. So if we go through all of them, like if we interweave through all of them, it can be uh, confusing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because like, if we're just throwing names, yeah. out, we're gonna be like, what? Okay, so because well, there is no, there is the overarching it. theme, <laughs> no. that, right? That, that, they're they're not, and they're not movies. connected, yeah, right. at all. Yeah, they are just short horror stories. At the beginning, it gives credit to Chekhov, Tolstoy, <laughs> and a French writer whose name I can't pronounce. Whether this is true or not is a subject for some debate because nobody can apparently track down the actual stories that bear any relationship to what you see on the screen. I was going to ask about that because I've read some Chekhov and some Tolstoy. I'm pretty sure there were no telephones in Chekhov's time. I didn't time. see correlation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tolstoy either, I don't think. Yeah. I know, uh, yeah. Tolstoy I mean, was Russian. What <laughs> we're, 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 we're talking about? Anna Karenina was on the phone all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Chekhov and Tolstoy are both Russian. Yeah, well, Tol- Tolstoy would have been the Vertilac. Chekhov would have been the telephone. And the French writer would have been the uh, the drop of water. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Theoretically. In sure. theory. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so the telephone. Mm, yes. Yeah, El telefono. What's it about? A phone. Mostly a phone. <laughs> <laughs> a, black, a black and red phone. A black and red phone. A right. woman getting threatening phone calls mm-hmm. on a phone by someone who at first we're let we I love to believe that they can see every move that this woman is making yes. in, in her, her subterranean uh, in her well appointed apartment basement yeah yeah apartment that is with the very fancy pajamas decked out to all <laughs> yeah it is the bed is insane out. she has one of those velvet ropes after her bed as if to call a butler never pulls it never pulls God it damn it um, she changed her outfits eight times in about right. a span, a real life span. Like what we're supposed to believe is like, I don't know, a 45 minutes in her night. Yeah. Cause this, this story unfolds almost in real time. Basically. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, uh, is it just something maybe about like the, I mean, you always think of like when you think high fashion, well, right? it's either I mean, Italian or French. Is that just a thing that like, if you have a beautiful woman in your movie, She's going to go through eight costume changes. Well, let's, <laughs> you know? Look at part of it realistically. As a woman, she came home in one outfit. Yep. She she got out of that outfit, which when she took that off, she was in her just her like... Like a negligee. Her undergarments, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So that doesn't count as putting on a second one because that right. was what was underneath. <laughs> sure, <laughs> okay. but, but... But then, no, no, no. But the, then she goes to take a shower. Mm-hmm. She comes out in this like towel okay. thing, yeah. which... I get that. Sometimes I'll put on a nightgown when I don't want to get dressed yet. I got that. I'm, I'm with it. So I get far. that. Got it. <laughs> and then she's like, "Okay, now I want to put on my actual pajamas, which were ornate. We can't call those pajamas. I think it was a robe because she wasn't wearing was anything robe, underneath. Yeah. She it, was not. Apparently, she took it off. Really, we see back this yeah. modest 1960s. But I'm yeah, still but thinking it, it might like, be a lot of skin for the 1960s. It looked yeah. like a ball gown. Yeah. Poofy shoulders. Yeah, yeah. I wonder, did, did that, I can't, none of this had to, could have served a comfort role no. at Maybe all. it's your this smoking jacket. Look, I guess so. It's like, <laughs> it's it, like but, those... but you can just see her, like, leaning against the wall, just. <laughs> yes. <sighs> yes, I can, actually, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's we like, can. I go it's to like my a, writing desk. Like, like a Virginia smoke. Slim. It's like yeah. a rich, <laughs> yeah, like a rich widow robe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So realistically, Rough. we've got at least three outfits that are legit. But then we we have, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she changes into a different nightgown. But, uh, yep. but so I, th- we, I think we have yep. a total of three so nightgowns. Those are her real here. pajamas. I think we have three nightgowns. She has the nightgowns that she put on after the shower. I think that's her. Uh, I'm going to say that's her drying nightgown. Sure, she's still wet. Sure, she's not going to dry herself. <laughs> like in the I towel. said, legit. She puts it on to legit. walk around and dry off. And then that's legit. Another nightgown, and then she swaps night, and then she cha- changes to give. Her friend Mary a nightgown so when she comes. Really, in. the only one I'm questioning is the last one that she changes into. Why she changes into that, I don't know. That's well, the only one I really question. That goes to, I guess, like how did you take the? What is this? Story there was sexy, about? sexy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there was clothes thrown on the floor, and somebody put on the stockings. wrong one afterwards. I think so. Right. Because she the, seemed pretty tired. The implication here is that, uh, well, okay, so th- this woman is getting these threatening phone calls. Uh, she did, doesn't recognize the voice. It is for all intents and purposes, a man's voice that's threatening her. It says that he can see her changing. Mm-hmm. And he lusts for her body, but 
he really just it wants to kill her. She, he's going to kill, quote unquote, kill her before the dawn. For yes. revenge, he says. For yes. revenge. So you're like, what the hell is going on? She do. Yeah. And then somebody slips a note under her door, which ends up being a uh, news clipping that says this Frank character, a gangster, we assume. Or, sure. or, or, or. Pimp? No. No. Scorned lover, maybe? Never yeah, what would him. you put him away for? He I would say gangs. Something. Maybe, yeah. maybe she turned him in for a crime. I don't think she right. gets away with that. I don't know. That doesn't mean he's a gangster. He might have just done something bad. So the common, can, the the way that the critical reception of this is, says that she's a high end prostitute and he's her pimp. This time I was watching uh. it, going like. I'm not I don't get that. Seeing that, I, don't get I mean, that I all. get that she and Frank in the past had some type of relationship. He, because he says something about like coming back or Mary, her friend says you'll be uh, together with Frank again. Yeah, I don't assume that uh-uh. that's in like a pimp uh, prostitute relationship. No, it, it, it seemed like, like she, was, she stole Frank away from Mary or something of the sort. Is what it seemed like to me. Oh no, I think I didn't get that either. I think those two really who. Mm-hmm. Mary and Rosie? Yep. I think they're lovers. Obviously, Mary no. is up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, really? yeah. Definitely. Yep. And then she decided to go with Frank at one point, and well, she Mary was with, is, She was with is Frank. That, no, 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 was, I, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't, oh, see no, no, no. I didn't get that at this, all. I'm seeing the saltiness from Mary come through here as... That Mary and Frank were together, no. and this little harlot Rosie comes along. No, and Mary, takes him. <laughs> Mary wants Rosie. And that's all why the way. Mary is so fucking pissed about. No, this. no, I no. agree. Rosie that left Mary at some point and left Mary out in the lurch. I agree. Mary's, Mary's giving off some vibes, but I don't see Rosie giving off the same vibes. Well, there's, Colin, there's, you and me are here. I yeah, think yeah, that's a stretch guys. because the, the yeah, plot I, then I, is that. Uh, you know, at least the on the surface, is that the scorned lover is uh, Mary, who Rosie said she didn't want to see anymore, yeah. and so Mary's dejected, and so she has this conjured whole, this up plot, this whole yes. plot, this whole plot to get her to like get she's back pretending into to her. be Frank, yes, and calling her on the phone so that Rosie will call her and invite her over into yes. her house and be so frightened that like I don't want you to leave, I got to you got to stay the night yes, here, exactly. and then she spends the night with her, and this is why the clothes get messed up. Yes, there's a shot of like Rosie. Lying Lying on the bed, clearly someone else has been in the bed with her, and her clothes are off her shoulder, which I think is 1963 code for she <laughs> yes. is. See, I'm no, no, no. I'm getting, I'm getting. That's 1960s for you were just drugged. I don't get a sexy vibe from that at all. Why did she drug her? Because she's psycho. She's trying to, you know, like. No, I get, I get. No, I, this is I, the roofie. I guess I see what you're saying. Man, I don't know. Oh, I think so. I, I think get, that's definitely the way it is. I get the I get the Mary vibe. I get that. I don't think that Rosie was into it. You know, now that you mentioned that when her writing that letter at the end when saying like, is this all it's like I guess I was I was going into this so innocently. <laughs> Is it like it's the like, 60s? They did what? Back in the no, she just really wanted her friendship. No, uh, yeah, no. Thing. Oh, no, it's so much farther than uh-huh. that. <laughs> she makes all these like insinuations, like you know, nothing has changed since we were friends before, and like all just the way that she yeah. comes over is like very uh, yeah. insinuating, right? Yeah. The whole plot is to get back into her bed, which she does, and then has to write an apology letter the next morning, right. <laughs> basically saying like, "I'm sorry that was I it really did all so this." Bad? seeing me again? Yeah. Was it really so bad? But what she hasn't counted on is that Frank actually has escaped from prison. And is coming back. (laughs) And because of the change of clothes, he mistakes Mary for Rosie and strangles her. With the pair of stockings. Mm -hmm. Classic. Mm -hmm. Classic. (laughs) I suppose it's better than being strangled with a condom, which we've seen. Oh, God. Yeah. um, (laughs) The show. Yeah. So that works better for me. Yeah. Yeah, except he wasn't at all strangling her. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> you can't yeah, marry him. Yeah, yeah. So. We're they, letting that go? All right. <laughs> yeah, let it go. Okay. It's play acting. They didn't know what they were doing. I don't know. Yeah, she, it doesn't kind of. She messed it up. She's like pulling it away from her neck. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rosie, of course, because uh, Mary put the knife under her mm-hmm. bed or under her pillow, has a weapon to defend herself against Frank. End of story. Dead. All right, so this is the story that, and this also goes to back up the, what the actual subtext is, is the lesbian subplot. Yes. Pardon me. This is the story that gets the most 
editing in the uh, American version. In the American version, oh, no. they have changed the dialogue and added one special effect scene. And there's actually an extra scene where um, in both versions, there's somebody looking in through the blinds. Mm-hmm. And you're in this version, it's implied that it's Mary, right? Later, you're like, well, who was looking in our right? Mary? Because it's also implied that obviously Mary lives like above, upstairs in the same apartment building yes. because she's down there in. And how quickly she gets there, yeah. And how quickly she can go from watching to having the phone call and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Because there's no cell phones in this uh, day and age. Yeah. Uh, In the American version, there's a neighbor that she ends up with. So it's this male neighbor who stopped, looked through the window, and then went to his apartment. She comes out and is asking, like, did you see somebody out here? And he's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. There was nobody. So she actually leaves the apartment in the American version for a scene in the hall. Um, It plays it off like... Uh, Frank is a ghost. Like he's dead. What? Oh. And she's getting calls from the great beyond. And there's one special effect scene where basically there's a close up of a uh, note that the handwriting writes itself, <laughs> which I think basically explains like uh, I'm back from the dead to get. Is, Mar- is Mary in the American one at all? She's in it, but they've trimmed her scene so she is less. Um, you know, she's not really talking about like you know coming over to. And right. they cut out the scene of her talking on the phone, I think. And uh, yeah, uh. They, they cut out any. Thing that has to do with the vibe Man, that she I, and her. That and totally her makes sense. That's why I have all those phone calls are about how sexy she was and shit, too. Yeah. I see it sense. now. <laughs> I do see it now. It does make sense. I'm going to go home and rewatch that. <laughs> <laughs> if you see the, the Italian one. Yes. The Italian mm. one. All right. So that leads us right. into well, anything else on the, 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 the telephone. No, I mean, there's not, besides the lesbian thing, there's not a ton of subtext there. It's just like an exercise. Besides in the suspense. subtext that we both missed. Well, I, feel, I feel like none of these movies actually have subtext. It's no, just that, that that one was just trying to get around like 1963 censorship, right. <laughs> which I guess is the thing. You're a little they're more open in Europe in the European market, obviously yeah. that you can get away with that. And this seems to be like a reoccurring theme in all of these movies. There's lots of lesbianism in European movies of this period of time. We saw Tombs of the Blind Dead not too long ago. That even had like back when they were in college they had, they had a, you know the, the greatest lesbian love story that ever was apparently <laughs> yeah, which that's deleted for the american they one. cut that out goddamn americans yeah <laughs> jesus yeah, no lesbians in american cinema in the 60s um yeah but it's just i think trying to be like a uh because it's not even supernatural boris karloff's intro sets you up for like three tales of the supernatural Without yeah. the ghost story aspect. And I wonder that in the first one, it's straight up not supernatural. I thought about not that, too. Not even a little bit. And I, used yeah. to, I also thought about, like, I was like, oh, they're just, like, trotting Boris Karloff out here. Say a couple <laughs> fucking words. Right? <laughs> All right, Vincent Price is busy. Call Boris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boris <laughs> yeah, because this was, I think the reason that American International, like, uh, distributed this movie or picked it up was because they were in a process of doing, uh, with Roger Corman, this, uh, they call it the Edgar Allan Poe cycle, where they did these um, pretty big budget for them uh, adaptations of Edgar Allan Poe uh, stories. You know, The Pit and the Pendulum, mm-hmm. The House of Fall, The House of Usher, The Raven, etc. Big, you know, Mask colorful. Yeah. Big, colorful productions. And this kind of, especially in the Vertilac segment, looks like those movies yeah. do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, well, sure. we can sell this off like it's a, you know, one of our movies. <laughs> but, uh, Which brings us to the second film. The Vertilac. The Vertilac. Okay, so here's a weird anecdote. Side note, it was coming back from Midway Airport in Chicago last week. I look at Were a billboard. Were you driving a Vertilac? There's a billboard <laughs> for a lawyer whose name, I swear to God, was like, Somebody Vertilac, and I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, but the spelling's different. It was like, you know, V O D, you know, it was like spelled that way instead of the W U R. Right. And I'm like, a lawyer who's a blood sucking. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the weirdest thing. I'm like, I can't. Be I forgot to look him up uh, on the, the blood internet. Blood sucking lawyer. Yeah, find out if it was a real deal. So Vertilac is uh, apparently Russian. We're assuming Russian for a vampire. Do we know so, that's a real word? It is because I have a vampire encyclopedia, my friend, and nice. I was reading about Vertilax long before I saw this movie. I really hope there's not a lawyer named Vertilax that's going to sue us now, Colin. I'm going to look this up. When <laughs> oh, we're done I with this, we're going to check and see. V O R N D. I think Colin's name's on all the copyrights. We're fine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, 
Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll be fine. Liable. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's fine. We're going to take my record collection. <laughs> yeah. Well, it stars Mark Damon, not yes. Matt Damon. Which Sean and I were hoping was... Matt Damon's twin with a Italian mustache. Mark Damon. <laughs> yeah, doesn't look anything like him though. No. So we're thinking there's not a fam- familiar. Which connection. one was Mark Damon? The, the Count. The Count? Yes. 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 Okay. The Count traveling Vladimir Count. with the jaunty cape. Yeah, very jaunty. I think like this is another thing that the Italians would do. They had like these. Uh, so Mark Damon was an American actor, and somewhere in their career, when they're not getting like the prime uh, parts in in U.S. films anymore, they'd go international and like star in these. That's, that's, what, that's what like baseball. wrestlers. That's what baseball players do. They go to and Japan. The wrestlers do it too. They all yeah. go to Japan if they're not doing it right here yeah. and make a mint. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do. When that's how Clint Eastwood became a star. I mean, I'm assuming that's majority of the cast of this movie. I mean. They were all speaking, obviously speaking English. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But I think most of them are uh, Italian, with the exception of Damon and um, Boris. And Boris Karloff. And yeah. Boris. I think they were their two big, big pricey imports. Um, so, yeah. So this movie takes place in. I'm not even going to say what year it is. I don't know. I mean, it's a period piece. It looks. But vi- it's not. It looks not Victorian. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's before. The- before that, yeah? No. I don't think so. I didn't think it's on like the it other was. side of the whatever in, in Italy? No, I think in it's, Russia. I think sorry. it's like like Victorian and it's like rural Eastern Europe. So yeah, I go, in yeah. the time of what czar? Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's peg that down. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's old. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's fucking horse, old, yeah. man. <laughs> horse uh, era. Yeah. and uh, you Puffy know, shirts. And puffy shirts yep. and capes. Yeah. The same time as Tombs of the Blind Dead. That was the 70s. The before. No, before. Where the, <laughs> the, where the blind did come Ah, fuck it. Nope. We're all God. wrong. Uh, Timelines don't match up. Is, Crusades. Question for you. Is uh, this segment of Black Sabbath uh, a big favorite of Tim Burton's, and does it lead right into Sleepy Hollow, visually? I mean, I could see it, but then again, it's just because it's... <laughs> Like a creepy Eastern European woods with yeah. fog machines. Yeah. Like, it's also, but yeah, Timber with, with like dry ice is brighter than this. This is just all yeah. Like pitch I can see it a little but bit, but then I can also see like Young Frankenstein in this. Yeah, you know. I mean, let's put it this way: this wouldn't be the only one he would get inspiration mm-hmm. from. There's so many that have this look to it. Like, well, it's I, mean, I, I, I feel like this is just checking off all the the, the check marks of like the period <laughs> horror movie trope thing. Yeah, and I've seen enough. I've seen enough German cinema to know where Tim Burton got most of his influence That's from. That's very true. Mm-hmm. Dr. Yeah. Caligari. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Straight up rip off. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I can see it, but I, I I, would be sure. I would just be. Of course it does because it's dark and. Yeah, yeah, but the blue light and just this, yeah, it's, it's like it did. The, the house a, shot did remind me of a shot from uh, Fright Night, where they walk up to the house and mm. it's just billowing fog and yeah. everything, and it's got that like the green lighting up above and everything. Yeah. It's yeah. always that good creepy house shot where it's just seriously. I think haunting. Brandon's right. It's seriously such a trope. You can't really pinpoint it to one specific influence. No. Right. Yeah. It's like all of them. Yeah. And, and it's not even like it's not even like a period piece horror. Right. Movie. It's just like anything that takes place in like Germany slash <laughs> Ukraine slash yeah. Transylvania, Transylvania in slash the past like three hundred years. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. From of all time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you did if you did a <laughs> modern horror movie that took place in those places right now, it'd be creepy woods with a fog right. machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you look at the yeah. reality, it's fucking the suburbs. But yeah. we just are just like no, oh, yeah, it's the, creepy. That camera panned out, it would just be like <laughs> right. a street. <laughs> like yeah. that, just those houses that all look the fucking same. Yeah. But I love it that they're always out in the middle of well, I guess you see the, the long shot of like the the light in the window of the mm. house when he's riding up. Mark Damon is this traveling count who discovers a headless corpse with a dagger in the heart. That's always a good Which sign. Which I totally called as being a Turkish dagger. He did. You, he called, did. you called that real quick. Real quick. Because it's got the, the half It's just curved, yeah. Yeah. The curved like a mini dagger. scimitar-esque. Yeah. 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 Small scimitar. There we go. That's where we're going with, yeah? Sure. Yeah. And he uh, brings the body back to the, the first house that he finds where there's his family. And he doesn't knock. What the fuck? I don't think... Do you do that in the old days? You just walk right in. <laughs> You're, just well, like, you're just surprised. Like, first, I'm like, "Hello, yeah, I have a body on my horse." It, but it's not like a. Is anyone home? It's not like a big castle where they're like, a, "Like, don't knock." You just walk in because who knows where anyone is. This Hello? is like a one bedroom house. Yeah, this yeah. is a person's home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
That's pretty intrusive. You would, you would, you would not. I guess. Yeah. I guess if you're a fucking count, you don't worry they about. They do have people. right. But they do have guns. Like <laughs> he's never had to knock. In his so life. that might be able to pinpoint us into a time period. Well, that's very true. They he have. Does have there's a gun in this movie. Mm-hmm. So I would argue probably Victorian, right? Because it was a long rifle. His clothing yeah, suggested well, Victorian. And we'll if he's a ca- if he's a count, he's stylish. Mm. So. Okay. Yes. All right. We'll go with this until until the internet tells us differently. So otherwise, and they won't. Right. No. They never do. If no. you know when the Vertilac takes place, listener, <laughs> you can write to us. Okay, well, yeah. they have the very long rifles. They do the hunting. Yeah, hunting yeah, rifles. where they went out. And, yeah, for fox hunting and whatnot. Yeah. So the story here is that their father has gone off to fight this Alabek, yes. uh, who's been ter- a Turkish criminal who's been terrorizing the community, and who must be a vampire. <laughs> Right? Is that the idea? They that he's all seem many to think people. he is. He's because, a vampire, and if right. Dad doesn't come back before the stroke of midnight on the fifth day, then he, too, will be a vampire. That's a rule. Which is, I mean, it's a, a weird thing to assume, but whatever. I get it. Right, very, that's what very, I'm saying. Like, that's a weird rule. Just keep sure, rolling but, on yeah. it. But that's Got the it. thing. You're just like, at the stroke, you need that stroke of that's midnight That's the rule, thing. man. That's the rule. There needs to be rule. some sort of guideline. Yeah. Gotta, I got there's it. There's got to be something mm-hmm. that crosses a barrier that tells us this is bad. Sure. <laughs> Otherwise, it's there's usually midnight. Otherwise, there's too many questions. Yeah, right, right. They don't have time so to answer all those questions. They seem to know what they're talking up, about. Right, because that's how you do yeah, it. You they don't have time to answer then, questions. So the stroke of midnight happens. As soon as it happens, uh, maybe I would say five minutes afterward. It's on the stroke. Of, oh, yeah. they, we see him. We see yeah, the father yeah. walking across the creaky rope bridge. Stereotypical yeah. horror bridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I love like, this no one, stuff. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> like, yeah, that's why I like this A little this bit goes a long but, right, way. Nobody ever just like, should we, like, we could just build this bridge straight across. No, like, twig no, bridge. No, twig I bridge. I want it to go up slightly and then down <laughs> and make it look shitty. <laughs> mm-hmm. They built a really good one. He made them tear it down. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what is this bullshit? <laughs> yeah. Old man Boris Karloff stumbles out of the fog, being claiming that he's wounded, and so now the, the question heart. is: <laughs> In the heart, yeah. Is he is a vertilac or not? Oh. Uh, which leads the entire family, of which there are three young men, not including our count. Yeah, because there's the two brothers and the son, right? And then two sisters, two sister. one sister and a sister-in-law. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. One unfortunately named Stanka. Stanka. It's Stanka. <laughs> Stanka. Stanka. All with heaving bosoms. Yes. I will yeah. say. Like yeah. you said earlier, just top notch, just babes. I would. All, I think that all the women in, the, in all three of these, besides the old lady in the third one. We're very pretty. This very, is oh, the yeah. appeal of the Italian horror. Sure. They, uh, <laughs> genre. Yeah. they knew yeah. how to groom over there. Yeah. The, what'd you say? The, the the hot milkmaids. Yeah. 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 yeah that's how we pegged them down. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere, there's always some hot milkmaids. Yeah. So our count falls in love with Stanka. <laughs> <laughs> just we so, all really? <laughs> he falls in love with Stanka every now and again. I know I have. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. In the, in the span love. of about two hours, he is convincing this girl to run away with him because she, he is, she is the love of his life. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's look, in love with her. Well, look where he's at. How many women who look like that do you think he's going to come across? He's traveled. Across? Hang on. He's traveled. Chill, bro. <laughs> no, no, they got to get out because I mean, shit's going bad at the cabin. That's also yeah. well, very true. So I was going to say, at, now that we introduce all, our whole cast of people, literally they just make a bunch of dumb moves that if you actually thought that somebody might be a vampire, yes. a slow-moving, relatively non-threatening vampire yes. that you wouldn't do. You would just say, and they don't even explain it to him. Like They're just like, oh, hold my child, even though they look like, stressed about it. Like, just fucking say no to this dude right now. Yeah. You say, hey, man, we're going to lock you in that room. Until we, we think you're not a threat. But no, but they don't do that. He's like, go kill that dog. That's part of he's, Yeah. But he's, he's the father. He's the elder. I think that's what's going on. Yeah. There. It's like, he's the head you know, of the household. And I think household. it is, too. Yeah. Like, do you not follow my orders anymore? It's like, pfft, he's the well, law. Well, that's like, hey, bro, you said by midnight in the fifth day. Yeah. You came you after. You came after midnight. <laughs> we're obeying your orders. Yeah. yeah. And we're keeping our family safe. 
that would be but the smart move. They don't do that. No. They let him wander around willy nilly, like just holding people, going falling peeking asleep in windows, falling asleep very comfortably <laughs> like very, around, very him. obviously. <laughs> well, he's home, and we're not really sure, but our brother right. is hammered and might right. He's gonna keep watch, so we'll just go to bed. For all we know, he yeah. did that before he left. He just wandering around at midnight, just yeah. looking in the windows. Maybe, so maybe that's normal. Just creepy with the little snap zoom to yeah. like Shh. you wake up and look over and. Sh- Ugh. Oh my God! There's a man creepy looking uh, in my window. Dad, he mm-hmm. does that. Yeah, right. He's, he's, he's harmless. Um, he's not harmless. Go he on. abducts little. Uh, I can't remember the Yvonne. kid's name. Yvonne. Yvonne. Yvonne takes little Yvonne out into the woods, and so Yvonne's dead. And then Yvonne comes back and kind of one of those like, like uh, chilly, uh, whatever the, the the echo effect on the the kid's voice. She's so calling for Mama. Yeah. Mama. He's cold, cold, man. He's cold. Yeah, cool. creepy kids. Yeah, what's that from? Know. Are you afraid of the dark? Of the dark? Yes, I'm yes, cold. It is. It? You guys, oh, I'm so okay. glad somebody else got no, that. No, yeah, I'm cold. That's real, I, I did it. We were watching the movie. Oh, yeah, I was like, what the fuck? You guys, true doing? story. <laughs> yes. True story. The other night, I got wasted and I ordered all five seasons of Are You Afraid of the Dark on DVD. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's a good wasted buy. Bravo. Which one was the I'm Cold one? That's the one. Uh, that's it like wasn't, the, it's the, it's the, the red ghost. bicycle. That's the red bicycle. Okay. Like the ghost. It's the not the one with Tia and Tamara Maori? No. No, no that's, that's the, the one with the lizard. That's yes. the lizard one, okay, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one where the kid drowns in the, the dam. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cold. And he comes back and he's cold? Yep. He's cold. He's cold. Oh, shit, yeah, they're all cold. Cold ghosts. It's freezing wherever they are. He was kind-hearted. He was just cold. Yeah, he was just cold. cold. He just wants someone to figure it out yeah. and find him. Well, not little Yvonne, though. Yvonne's come back to put the bite on mom, but when she opens the door to welcome him, I'm like, she kills her husband. She does. She stabs that uh, motherfucker. Very, like, like, weird, like, fiery Italian stereotype, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that is my son. Yeah. I will kill you. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Damn, yeah, like chill. Damn, yeah. yeah. Jesus. He's like, no, he's not. He's a Verdelac. She Don't stabs you know. the fuck out of him. Huh. Sam's well, she's fucking... first. She's like, no. If you if you stab him, I'm gonna kill myself. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's very. Dramatic. And then she ends up killing him. And you can Crazy. hear his like audible sigh. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he is still Everyone trying to. Me. Well, he's still trying to protect her, even with his dying breath. Like, don't go out there. Yeah. You know, if you stab me to death, I'm dying. That's okay. But whatever you do, don't open that don't door. Open the door. Well, but then later on, he is also a vampire. Oh, I'm sorry. A Verdelac. <laughs> yeah. Well, he becomes one. Right? Yeah, but you being would think, stabbed. but she stabbed, she wasn't a vampire. She stabbed him and he died. Yeah, but old Gorka is walking around doing I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. But in my head, vampire mythology is you have to be alive when I took the blood out of you if you need to come. I can't just like go up to any corpse and make it a vampire. Yeah. That's very true. I, and if you if she does stab, like it's, if somebody goes and sucks on him after he's been stabbed and everything, is he still going to turn into a vampire? Apparently. If he's not dead yet. Yeah. I guess so. Maybe that was yeah. it. Maybe, Maybe he was dying, like, but that's what he was just clinging to life. Yeah. Yeah. And she him. opens the door, Grandpa's there, and yeah. the kid comes in, you know, they each grab one, kill, and turn sure, him. That's very yeah. true. Sure. You know? Which sets the, the scene for a family reunion. Stenka. Where they all come after Stenka. Because Stenka has after run away at this point. the count convinces yeah. Stenka to run away and thinks that... I love you. So, okay, so they, they run away, and they go to an abandoned monastery that literally has a Just monk ruins. corpse, yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. skeleton, on like a table. And they like, have that all over the place. In like the basement of it. Right. And like, this place seems safe until morning. Right, I found a table of hay. Honestly, we should sleep here. At that point in the movie, I was like, oh shit, like he's actually like the king's that's what vampire. I, that's what I thought. That's what whatever. I thought, too. That's like, what I thought, too. Like, oh, was yeah? like, somebody else is a vampire. Like, he's a count. Nobody knows who the fuck he is. He right. just shows up. Everybody turns around into a vampire. He convinces her. I was just like, oh, this dude, That's he's just like, took, he, he just, like he's going to be his vampire queen now. Yeah. But apparently in this world, like if you're a, a vampire, it's played like straight. I yeah. couldn't. You know it. You see it. There's no like. I couldn't right. decide. Of yeah, yeah. I kept vampire. waiting for a reveal. I did too. See, yeah. And I was, I couldn't decide if that was a misdirection or misopportunity. Well, I think because of the, the, the what, 63, we said, for this yeah. movie, there was a lot of things that we are all trained as horror movie lovers yes. to notice. Right. And so you notice when all these things don't happen. Mm-hmm. When they have the big, the the the, the actresses on the left third of the screen, and you have the big open space. Right. With, Something's with, with like a window space. right there. You're waiting for something to walk across the right. window. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like yeah. all these subtle things that have been around forever. Right, we were tra- like, weren't we're quite tra- around then. Like yeah, that, yeah. Right. Still it wasn't inventing the yet. language at right. that point. Yeah. Isn't that great that you can yes. watch something from way back then, and just none of that lines up with what you're trained <laughs> to see? Well, it's yeah. all the obvious things 
things is that people just like added on to it, right? It's the things of like being there and like when someone like turns around, we are all trained now as hardwood lovers. Like, oh, something's gonna be right there. Right. Yeah. It might be a red herring. It might be just like her dog or a right. bird or something, mm-hmm. or it could be a ghost or but whatever. Something's mm-hmm. gonna be, there. but something will be there. Yeah. Like, this right. is how I, horror movies work. I mean, I assume that the the same thing applied to the audience of the day. They were like accustomed to how these movies work, but right. now it's like. You know, you, there is such a rhythm to how horror movies, uh, were, like, there was something, that, you know, some horror movie that came out recently that didn't apply by, the, you know, for, or uh, uh, abide, abide, by, by, abide by the abide rules, those yeah. rules, and the timing was off, and everybody hated it, and I can't remember if it was, like, The Witch or if it was The Babadook or something like that, but you heard this kind of blowback on it, it was because it wasn't having the... Every ten minute, you know, the ten, every ten minutes, there's got to be like a scare moment. Yeah. you can well, it feel it coming. It's it like a mathematical been, uh, the had those moments, but the witch did not. I was gonna say it's probably the witch. I don't yeah, think it'd be the bad. The witch was supposed yeah. to be a sort of period piece. Everybody went in thinking it was gonna be like a scare, a scare fest. fest. Yeah. yeah, because we're accustomed. I mean, even it has that kind of like. I mean, it's on like or almost like a timer rhythm. Right, I yeah. watched uh, Ouija two or Annabelle. Like they all have it. Like it's about every ten minutes, there's a scare. Like you can yeah. feel the That's rhythm, and when you don't, come that back doesn't like, happen. Ten minutes, we've gone. Fifteen minutes is no scare. Yeah, like, my, 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 my kids started checking their phone after seven minutes without yeah. a scare or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ugh. I know because yeah. I loved uh, the witch. I know. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. we're fans of the witch. All fans of the yeah. witch here, <laughs> except, <laughs> except Michaela. Uh, that's yes. right. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. Doesn't like that yeah. movie, <laughs> which is fucking silly. That movie is amazing. It's, yes. Well, we us three are fans of the witch. That's right. I think it ended up on our best of. It did. It did. It all did. three of ours Six best of. Yeah. I think that the pacing of it without those things is what made me really, really. That's what actually built tension. Yeah. Because there was no like tension build and then release. And then release. Like, right. It yeah. was yeah. slow Keeps tension build. Dread. So by the end, you're just yeah. like Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Yes. Which yeah. Is, it's a, which, right, it's which is exactly what happened in the Vertilac. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, in reality, uh, uh, Stenka gets turned by her family <laughs> after they, after he rides for probably 15 minutes and decides it's fucking like, fine. Oh, I'm tired. Yeah. Um, she is turned, and then in there, he knows she's a vampire. And but just, she puts the whammy on him. She gets the vampire the contact yeah. and does the... Uh, yeah. What that is it, what's it called? Glamoring somebody? Glamour, yeah. Yeah, yeah, glamour, yeah. That's yeah. what it was in True Blood. That's what it yeah. was in the craft. You got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, then he just like lets her suck his neck, and that's it. And that's it, yeah. I'm so, and the whole family's it, creeping out the back door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of creepy, underlit, yeah. different colors and all this. Yeah. I like that's because I think it was a composite in. of people. Yeah. Oh, uh, sure. right, wait a minute. Well, they were each in a pain, right? Right. Yeah. Well, that's why I think it was a composite, because yeah. the one lady was just like, that shot was from earlier. Mm. That looks familiar. Was that implied? They are different colors. That... Um, in this vampire universe that you only attack the ones that you love? That's what they said. They said that. They said that. And it made sense that the dude didn't get turned until the end until he loved her. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's kind of a stretch for a pretty on-the-nose movie, but... Right. But no, it did kind of follow that, because it wasn't until they're just like, I love you, and they kissed, and then Mm -hmm. she's like, all right. Which would also imply that maybe the grandfather was actually lovers with the Turkish criminal... Oh. oh shit! He <laughs> the fuck? I don't know. You can't. Uh, maybe you can send this. But no, I don't know. No, no, no. Maybe, maybe you can't send this. But I think Brandon just verbally mic dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he laid down after and that. then he leaned back. <laughs> it's like he I dropped a bomb. On him. It's like I set up a joke pretty well. Yeah. yeah. And the, oh but the God. funny thing is that we were all like. Whoa, <laughs> baby! No, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's infection by exposure to the. Right, you uh, never yeah. know. It's the type of insight element. that makes me deserve to pick up. <laughs> no, trying to earn to the stripes. End. I'll give you no. I'll give you Italians like their lesbianism. They don't let like gay. Not in the 60s. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure it's probably happening a lot. But even this, there are a lot of sympathetic gay characters in a lot of Italian. So more so in Italian movies at the time than that like is American true. Movies that is true. So at least they were aware that like there was a gay population. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where everywhere else was like, no, this doesn't. Like, that, doesn't <laughs> so that was yeah. that was That's more that was more towards the late 60s. This is early 60s. That's true. Yeah. As you get yeah. into the 60s. Yeah. Um, Swinging sixty, yeah. Which is why, which is why, which is why they had to leave the house. 
to do it because it was not a good test. Stop it. <laughs> All right, moving on. This is why he was gone for five days. <laughs> he went into the mountains. He planned it out. He's like, I'm going to be gone for three, four, five days. That's I the need, rule. It's going to be an I intense need five rule. days. Uh, it works. Jesus. It checks out, folks. You heard it here first. Oh, It'll oh, be analysis oh, yeah. of Black oh, yeah. He's Sabbath. Dead. Yeah, he's dead. He yeah. died. Totally died. All right, so this leads us to the <laughs> third and final story, the drop of water. Oh, the drop of water. Okay, so this one takes place apparently in France. We're saying in Paris. Is this the music a- 1920s suggests- France? Yeah. yeah. Where- like 1920s, 1930s, there was electricity for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There was... A wind-up phonograph. Yeah, Victrola. Yeah. So, yeah, 20s, 30s, probably yeah, 30s. About right. I'd say so. Well, this is to me. I've always thought that this was the like the one that feels the most like it could be a Twilight Zone episode or some kind of like it's the most realized horror. It's funny you mentioned uh, that episode of the the, the, the movie. Oh, that's that's what I started doing when at the end of the, the telephone when it when it just zoomed over to the the red phone. I started doing the Rod Serling voiceover mm-hmm. in my head. Yeah, as I it got was that. I got that too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, and the obvious one is like the first thing I thought of when. The drop of water was like, oh, this is a Telltale Heart. Like, yeah, yeah. this is a Real Poe. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever their version of it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of is. It yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Um, Telltale Fly. Yeah. It's a movie <laughs> where. Telltale B. Yeah. It was, that, it was like, was it, it, I think it was supposed to be a fly, but it looked yeah. like a oh, bee. That was a, that was a gigantic up, insect. That was a huge Bum- fly. Bumblebee. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bumblefly. There's a woman who's a nurse who is called to the the house of uh, an older woman who has passed away. An and, older puppet that has passed away. Yeah. Well, okay, so the, that thing, when I first saw that, that was the creep. Well, I That's, saw it on a significantly smaller screen, sure. so maybe it looks a little no, more. It no, it was creepy, creepy man. It was creepy. It was, creepy. creepy. That was fucking, like, old lady face. Absolutely. I thought that. The, the the practical effects for that old the fake old woman dead old woman was really good yeah I liked it it's a sculpted thing but it's like it, it is like one of the creepiest it faces is. It's, like, it's like it's, it's like the sneer. teeth and then like the fucking the weird gums on top of the it's teeth like, even when it's obviously fake like the face that it was making was straight up creepy it was yeah. really it was, creepy it was good yeah. that was I was really honestly the whole third act I was really impressed by completely. Mm-hmm. Well, this is the one that feels the most Mario Bava. Also, like this is where he really brings in the colored lights. Yeah, I love the uh, all Italian films, and I also you know the use this. Light. In, in, yeah, the blink, the, the fucking blinking light, <laughs> the light yeah. out the window that it's motivated by whatever. It's the green tavern yeah, light out. They're front. always right. living up near some something that's going on. Yeah, she's there's always like these different you know the colored gels are really coming into. Yeah. And the idea being that this woman was a spiritualist. She's into the occult, and she died while she was in a uh, like a medium's trance, giving some type of reading, and has passed away. And this lady has to come over and prepare her, I guess, for a visitation or burial for or the whatever. funeral. Yeah, for the funeral. Yeah. puts a dress, stockings, shoes on the yeah. yeah on the corpse. But she sees this woman is wearing an expensive ring. And so she pries it off the finger, Mm -hmm. and the horror begins. Uh, So I love the setup and payoff of this because this is like you know this. I guess this is the type of uh, horror structure that for a short film that I respond to. You have the setup where everybody explains what's going on, and then the second half is the creepy shit where you know things, and then the the. The punchline, mm-hmm. where the creepy thing shows up and extracts its supernatural revenge. It works the best. It's got the best, I think, shorthand as far as setting up a story like this. As as far as that goes, I'm especially when you look at like steal the ring, bad shit happens, and then you know, when she goes again. home, and then like the power goes yeah. out, she, she hears this drop of water. She hears the multiple drops of water from around the house that's just echoing in her head, like yeah. the so heart, she like going the heart crazy. Beat and exactly. Heart. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It yep. is totally. The- it is, so, yeah. That, that, that's what it was. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. just like, yeah, driving her crazy. She yeah. had to make it stop. It's yeah. the guilt, right? And, well, then they and, had and the, part uh, of me thought that was like, oh, she's just she's going to return the ring to stop it. My head went, she was going to return the ring to the corpse to stop it, and then the corpse still wouldn't stop because it was still pissed about it. But, I mean, we're close, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. She actually does see the corpse in her house, like yeah. eventually. It's mm-hmm. like Which is the build. only like modern esque horror payoff part of any three of these was the hearing the noise and then opening the door 
And then that creepy corpse is sitting on her bed. And I yeah. was just like, it starts to sit up. And then, oh, yeah. 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 It starts yeah. to sit up. And I was just like, I was like, this is good. Yeah, was, yeah. it's creepy. That's straight up, that's good effects. I was like, I was in for that for yeah. sure. Yeah, me too. That was really well done. And there's just a bunch of like, they're not really shock moments, but it's a building of the, you don't have time to recover from like, you know, the corpse is sitting up in the bed. She runs to the other room. Yes, the yeah. corpse is sitting in the rocking chair with the cat. No, it just kind of keeps hitting you. And then the yeah. hand, then and she she's like somewhere frantically. Else, the hand comes yeah. And she's and like she, frantically rocking. Yeah. And yeah. she turns yeah. around and then turns back around on the rocking chair. And there's no old woman in it, but the rocking chair is still rocking crazy. I mm-hmm. think that's good. I liked all of that. that and then the hand up behind her. Yeah. Yep. That was great. Mm-hmm. And then in the segment that they used in the Babadook on TV, I believe, is, is the old woman now standing, like just kind of gliding yeah. across the room and with her arms yeah. outstretched. And the yeah, woman that before somewhere, like, like telepathically <laughs> okay, so, making the woman. Yeah, where have I choke seen herself? that? Was it yeah. was it in a period movie? Maybe yeah. involving a witch. A short, a short, a film, short that, film that we may have had something to do with yeah, called maybe. Witch Finder. Oh, okay, you there got it me. is. There you it got is. Me. It's just like I haven't talked about my movie. There in a it long is. Time. I'm gonna bring this <laughs> movie that you I can like. look it up. It's They're on Spider-Man. YouTube. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this was clearly a. I mean, this was one of those things where I'm like, yeah. you know, what did I think was creepy? Yeah, and, and like I, I thought figure. of this movie, that yeah. thing coming across the floor with its arms coming out. I'm like, that's creepy as hell. Well, I yeah. thought, that, I thought that whole third act. I thought that was just like timeless creepy, like that, like that short little movie. I think will always be scary. Right, that'll always get you. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. I mean, that's why I think it still works now. It's like Time it's tested. one of it's like a perfect execution. Of uh, oh, it's like a perfect execution of uh, like just the short horror film. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Like forty years from now, someone's gonna be doing a podcast in the basement and watch that and be like, "That was fucking good." Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was. It almost made it worth sitting through the other two. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this is my point. Like, if so, that's that's how they're so they're trying. The original intention of the movie is trying to leave you with that, right? That like the ending is strong. It kind of forgives any you know doubts you would have had about the the, the first two. But if you front load the movie with that, then you're setting an expectation that yeah. cannot. Then you walk off. out like, man, that movie started off good, but man, they yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. They yeah. Did not land well, it. I even loved yeah. if they would if that if that Boris Karloff vehicle wouldn't have been in the middle. <laughs> it was at the <laughs> end of the American one. If that, oh, if, really? that, if, that if they would have replaced that with another movie that had like centered around like a lonely woman. Then you have a pretty cool trilogy of three little films there, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Well, if you would, have, you call it like the Bachelorette trio. I think if you it, the way that you fix the vertilite to make a uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, copyright, copyright Brandon, copyright <laughs> Brandon. Yeah. Um, I think if you you could tweak the vertilite to just remove the traveling count. I get the idea that he's there to basically be your entry point into this sure. world, but if you remove him and the love story and just make it about this family who's got this father who's gone out and coming back. You know, but then there's not so much it. focus on Stenka, and I would <laughs> right. miss that. Well, but, so, if we didn't have what if you the, could what remove if, the focus? What on if the Stenka. Vertil, what if the Vertilac? <laughs> so if the Vertilac, the Count didn't exist in Vertilac, and our main character that we attach ourselves to is Stenka from the yeah. beginning. Yeah, then, then it fits. Yep. Yeah. So what is her? And thing? she's well, and, and, and then she's torn because her this guy comes back and it's her dad, but she's not really sure. And the whole family starts acting weird around her, mm-hmm. and then it plays off her paranoia. And then the end, you realize it's real. Yeah. Boom. And you just That's shorten the thing one, by yeah. about half of the running time, probably. And yeah. then you have Which, a really cool theme that rides throughout all three films, and you still have fucking Boris Karloff there for some reason, <laughs> <laughs> right? All right. Trivia, real quick, before we head into mailbag and then our wrap ups. This is we the hope part uh, where Colin knows something we don't and he reveals well, it to us. Well, the only thing, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, this movie is so well thought of by Quentin Tarantino that yeah. in the movie Pulp Fiction, when uh, Eric Stoltz is showing different types of heroin that he got, he's got the Bava. The Bava, oh, Because oh, Pulp yeah. Fiction is a three story. Sure, uh, right. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, bam. Uh, I like that. I'm going to watch <laughs> yeah. Pulp Fiction again, goddamn. <clears throat> All right, uh, so we're gonna what we're gonna do? We're gonna summon our mailman. We're gonna answer some of your mail, and then we're gonna go around the room, and you're gonna find out what we each thought of Black Sabbath in detail. So first, I suppose we should summon Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Thanks, dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he fist bumped you. Oh, that's nice. My man. I didn't know he knew how to do that. He doesn't feel accepted very often, so that's nice for him. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to go off and uh, start looking in other people's windows. Um, so about our film. Oh, by the way, uh, the way you get a hold of us, you can uh, please write in. Uh, we'll read your comments on the air if you want to talk about this episode or any of our previous episodes. Just let us know how we're doing. Yeah. Uh, you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can also find us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can write to us by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can find us on Instagram at Saturday or night freak show so about black sabbath when we announced that we were going to be doing black sabbath nick hammond writes in and says i love ozzy oh wait yeah (laughs) yeah not that one oh Uh wait yeah it's not that one nick uh, we were trying to figure out, like, what should we watch, the Italian version or the U.S. version? Karate Warrior 2 writes in and says, when it comes to Italian directors from I that know. era, you go with the Italian cut for the more authentic vision of the film. True. He says, I'm speaking generally, but I, just knowing the shit that Italian filmmakers were trying or allowed to get away with in their heyday, that's why he's suggesting the Italian version. He was more, probably right in this case. Yeah, I think we all agree yeah. with that. I think so. I think if you're going to go with something like this, you go At with At first, I was pissed. Because they were obviously speaking. <laughs> I was English like, "There's an English Italian. version, and they're speaking English." I mean, Colin, what care. are you doing? But they'll, then, they'll film yeah. it in English and then redub it in English. Yeah. The Beyond. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> Italian uh, cinema, I think maybe this is a thing that I don't know if a lot of film watchers know this, but most movies that you're watching today, <clears throat> ninety to ninety-five percent of the sound is put in after the movie like isn't recorded live ADR it's ADR you know yeah. it's additional dialogue recording where they just loop their lines and re-record yep. their lines and all sound effects everything you hear in a movie has been put in there after the fact the Italians just said well fuck it we're not even going to record like the scratch track yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they would just <laughs> no, record without sound because they're like well it's going to play in America it's going to play in Germany it's going to play in France and they're going to dub it anyway so yeah. why record with actual synced sound and plus, you could rewrite the movie. Yeah. Like after you yeah. shot it. <clears throat> so that's a cost. We could just cut off the sheet. <laughs> Sound. Yeah. Don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that's a Black Sabbath about uh, our episode, Dawn of the Dead. Nick Siebel writes in and says, with uh, how fin- financially successful Dawn of the Dead was, why was Day of the Dead never given a proper remake? He says, in 2008, there was a DVD or a film that went straight to DVD. But he says the original Day of the Dead was an underrated gem that never seemed to get its due. Do you have any thoughts? Zack Snyder didn't want to do it, and so they weren't going to give it to anybody else. I don't know. That's a good question. Well, the the so the, the George Romero one takes place, you know, underground military facility after it's like the apocalypse has oh. happened, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's this tension between the civilians and the uh, the military. Um, the the one that he's talking about the 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 direct to video one had Ving Rhames in it. Mm-hmm. It was directed by Steve but Miner. It, was, it wasn't the same oh, yeah. Ving Rhames character, obviously. Right, not it was the a same different character. character. Had Nick yeah. Cannon, had Mina Savari, and uh, Steve Miner was he had you know Jesus. he did Friday two and three and then Nick did, Cannon uh, from Nick Cannon's Wild and Out. That's you right, are correct, sir. <laughs> So now you're going to go check this movie out. Uh, apparently, it's wretched. It's one of these deals yeah. where somebody got the rights for a, a cheap amount of money and exploited it. So it's not like, you know, Donna, that was a major studio. Yeah, you know, they, the remake. they didn't yeah. have much faith in this one. Yeah. And I don't really blame them. Yeah. And I don't know that you could. I know Day of the Dead, the Romero's Day of the Dead is his favorite, Romero's personal favorite of the mm-hmm. movies. But uh, I don't think that the love is there from. The viewing public at large, you know, who generally right. consider even night or dawn to be uh, mm-hmm. one of the best. So, I don't know. There's a tricky prospect of really remaking Day of the Dead. And I think it's the era is uh, for zombie remakes like that is over. Done. They are bringing back uh, Nick Cannon's Wild and Out, by the way. Are they? Yes. Hey, are they I'm not really? joking. Isn't they really he, oh, Jesus. Isn't he the host of, is it America's Got Talent? Not anymore. Okay. Oh, it's Tyra, it's, it's Tyra Banks quote. now. Okay. He got mm, fired. Quote, quote. Oh, I will, shit. Uh, I will watch some Wild and Out. Uh, it's one of those shows that if it was on, I wouldn't change it. Right. It's just like, it's your flip through. You're just like, 
Right. Uh, there were some things that were on there were kind of yeah. funny. Everybody seemed very lighthearted and nice. Yeah. At the end, they start insulting each other. You know what I didn't fun. care for? Yo Mama with Mulder Volmer out. Vol- <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. All right. Sorry. Uh, we can continue was, uh, now. We can MTV continue. MTV, I'm guessing. Um, Both yeah, of these were. Right, yeah. Well, Karate Warrior 2 writes in about Donna Dunn and says he wants to know if he's going to get banned for agreeing with Holly and Michaela that she's all that is a great movie. I mean, I You're like a good it. man. <laughs> Well, then he says, I like shit. It, Dom. He says, shit, now that I see the cover, I should ban myself. Ooh, zing. I like how it's Dom a fun just, movie. I like how Dom just covers all bases when he writes in. He's, he's getting on like, you for ah, chewing. Which, Did which, you see that? On the which one is she's all that? Well, hey, I was it's, eating food. Uh, Rachel Lee Cook and Freddie Prince Jr. She's, she's, the like the, girl she's like the nerdy art student. And he, like, oh, yeah, no, her over. That's, the, that's the trope of she's actually super smoking Right, hot. that's where it comes from. But we're just going to take your glasses off and put you in like nice clothes. Right, yeah. That's literally it. That's where not another teen movie gets that from. I kind of like that movie. Yeah. I like that movie. It's a fun movie. Walker's in it. Usher is the school. DJ, it's great. Oh yeah. So I guess that means we're not gonna ban you, no, Karate Warrior Two. You're fine. Yeah, you're Whoever fine. you may be, Karate Warrior Two. <laughs> uh, the Vintage Shack writes in and says, uh, "I wish they would have lasted longer in that zombie truck slayer at the end of Dawn." Yeah. Of the yeah, that, that was, was pretty cool. cool. Oh, yeah, that was, was cool. Good. Agreed. Right. So now we're gonna go around here from every- now. This is one of these like you know high stakes moments, folks, where you don't know how people are going to come down on this movie. And everything has sounded pretty general so far, or pretty good. Pretty right? good. But, but we can always just, like, change your minds. That's right. Turn it's die. like, you know what? I realized, I don't like this movie. We don't know. We, we don't may know. not. But we're going to find out, like, right now. Sean, what did you think of Black Sabbath? Black Sabbath. Um, I mean, I've heard of this movie for a long time. Colin's talked about it before, so it's nice to finally see it. Um, I really enjoyed watching it tonight. Um, I think uh, I think my favorite of them, like I said before, is uh, the Vertal Act. Just because, like I said before, the lighting, the look of it, I just like that old gothic look in this. I'm not, it's, which is weird because I'm not a really huge fan of kind of like the gothic horror movies like you are. Because I know you're a big fan of them and they're He's not. He's pointing at me. Uh, yeah, I'm pointing they, at Colin. Well, we all know, know who I'm talking about. <laughs> we all know who I'm pointing at, they Colin. <laughs> Um, but I think there's like really good storytelling in all of these, even some of the, I mean, I guess some of the weaker ones, but I enjoyed all of them. Telephone, um, I really liked, um, the, the drop of water. Also very good. Like we said, very creepy stuff. That last like 10 minutes of that is like really good and just authentically creepy. Um, and I even enjoyed the Vertilac. I mean, I think it's because of the ridiculousness of it that I enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, but, yeah, it's really like it's a good time. It's creepy. It's fun. It's ridiculous. Um, I recommend it. I liked it. Um, so I, I would have to say the the telephone. I was a little bored with. Um, the story was was okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. Yeah, the Vertilac. I I didn't like the story at all, but I thought it was kind of cool looking. Um, but the telephone, I, I think the story was a little stronger than, than how it visually was for me, but both of them kind of bored me. Um, the strongest was definitely drop of water for sure. I, I agree with what we were, with what everyone was saying. It was significantly creepy. It, I think it still plays. It had my attention the whole time. It was definitely the strongest of the three. I really did enjoy watching that one. The question is, does it make up for the other two? I it, I was leaning towards maybe, but then the fact that they end with Boris Karloff on the fake horse. Oh, shit. With, <laughs> you're talking about that. That's not the, We'll that's bring awful. it up after we're all. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> the fake horse with the, 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 the crew around him. It just it totally brought me out of it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't like the rest of this movie. That just reminded me of it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh God. I, I really did like the drop of water. Um so it's hard for me to not recommend, but based on liking only one of the three, and that wasn't even the longest one, I I can't I can't in good conscience recommend the whole thing. Oh. I think uh, the telephone Sorry. kept me on edge, wondering 
what outfit she was going to change into next. <laughs> I mean, that's why I enjoyed it so much. I mean, that's like, where the suspense came like from. How lacy will the next night gonna that's, be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's basically what I was thinking yeah. down that entire thing. I'm like, right? what are we going to get into next? It was a curious. scandalous amount of uh, thigh on display. There was. Scandalous. Uh, that was a big when, plus when she for was me. off at the beginning, <laughs> I was just like, damn. Yeah. Like, it's amazing how that w- in the world we live in where the things that are so readily available that something like this from 1960s can do that and you're mm. just like, all right, damn. Mm-hmm. I had what? nothing in this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, as far as my wrap up goes, I okay. I liked. There's a lot of things I liked. I liked the telephone for what it was. It didn't really. I, I mean, I guess I, I missed the whole entire subtext of lesbianism <laughs> yeah, somehow. I don't know, dude. The subtext um, of lesbianism. But so I, I can't I'm <laughs> look forward and on shelves. It was still year. even without that subtext, it was <laughs> it was still to be enjoyable in kind of like that sixties movie, it's a Saturday and not doing anything, something to watch type of thing. That one was fine. The Vertilac did not hit on any cylinder. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Um a drop of water legitimately a fantastic short horror film mm-hmm. that I think if made today with a bigger budget, it could be made very similarly just, and it would be still be creepy. Honestly. Do you think she kind of looked like an old lady version of Annabelle? Uh, so I did think that a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so my recommendation would be uh, if it, if you have, if you want to watch something on Netflix, Absolutely, if it's at the Italian one, especially. Is it the Italian one on Netflix? On sh- no, that's on Shutter. Shutter watch the Italian or, one. Or find video. the Italian one. Find the Italian one. Watch the Italian one. Fast forward through the Vertilac, and you're good. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Wow. So wow. I guess that's the thing about when you have uh, <coughs> the anthology horror film, right? It's like anytime you have one, it's like, well, you, you're trying to grade the entire movie. But you're actually looking at the individual story, right. like how successful. Right, it's and hard. You're only giving like three different. Yeah, I like of this one, and then like that one. I did like that, you know, kind of thing. I, I mean, that's was, how they work. There was to me, they were so close to having one other, like I said, one other vignette in there that had a similar theme to a lonely, depressed woman type of character <laughs> that they had in the first and the yeah. third mm-hmm. to make it a really like if if the, if there'd be a third vignette similar to those. Not even similar, but of that theme in there, yeah. I think it was a fucking classic. Yeah, like I didn't care. I didn't down. care for the telephone, but it was okay. And if it would have been, if it yeah, been tied if in it, with, with that type of thing, it would be like, oh, I get it. That's, if, that's, yeah, that's cool. Uh, you know, if the if theme. the Vertilac right. had been more on that line, I probably have been like, yeah, dude. Yeah, it was decent. Yeah, that, yeah. That taking the whole yeah, thing exactly. as a whole is just like, damn, that's cool mm-hmm. and way ahead of its time. See, yeah. I like the departure because it gives you something. It's not just going to give you kind of variations of similar things through all of them, right? That you get that something that's completely different from the other. Well, two. yeah, but yeah. you wouldn't. But com- there's no like, what's the umbrella you, that you right, hang it all exactly. under? It's it like, is rather random. Three yeah. random stories. <clears throat> yeah, it's it not like here's a bunch of morality plays. Yeah. Right. Or here's, it would have had know, to have been a really good story and order for us to be like, okay, I don't mind that it didn't fit in. But it... Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Then I'm just like, okay, it's an anthology, there's three random stories. But when mm. the, the first and the third one fit so well together. Yeah. Mm. It's these creepy little vignettes with... I mean, I don't know. It was very close to being awesome to me, but <laughs> that middle... Mm-hmm. The fertile egg. Sean's favorite part ruined it. <laughs> 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 so ah, the <laughs> Yeah. Well, to be honest, that's always been the one that I've had the most trouble with, I think, because uh, it does feel the longest. I think, well, but yes. in some yeah. ways, like the telephone as a stylistic thing is a suspense. It's, you know, it's reality based. It's, uh, you know, so it's a thriller. And there's some, right? moment, there's some, a few moments in the telephone where I'm just like, I can see a little Polanski in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 But it, it clocks along pretty well because with its revelations. It's like, because there's always like, like, you know, what's going to happen? And then, you know, there's this that answers that. And then, you know, how's this going to develop? And then there's this up until the point where basically you're like, well, everything's been resolved once, you know, Mary reveals that she's uh, been fucking around with her on the phone. And then it's the suspense of now you're inviting, you know, the potential killer into your house. Mm. Uh, so then there's, the, the suspense changes, I guess, and, you know, works its way up that way. Um 
But I like that movie, you know, part of it's because of Michelle Mercier or whatever her name is. You know, she's attractive to watch in this part because basically for part of the movie, it's a one person show until uh, Mary shows up. You think of Polanski with the apartment. Or like, you know, because it's in a subterranean basement, it's like, uh, oh, God, I'm just forgetting that Wait Until Dark, the Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, I was thinking that too. Yeah. Um, so it's cool. It's full of like, you know, the Italian uh, fashion and uh, 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 like production design. So it's a cool little short movie. Um, the Vertilac being the centerpiece, I think it's supposed to be, you know, it is it is the, the money thing. Because this is where we have Boris Karloff. He's creepy as fuck in this. And it's a different role from some of the other things that I've seen him do in his career. I mean, you know, he's all grayed out and, you know, in color, which, you know, helps. I mean, I haven't seen Targets, which I, apparently I have to see, which is like a, a realistic movie. Yeah, about we've a, talked about that before. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody says you got to see it. So yeah. I got to look this one up. But I will um, say that Boris Karloff's makeup in this it was pretty cool. Yeah. It's cool, but it was you it was a little camp and a little overdone. Little yeah. Right. Yeah. But I, that's, it gets oh, a little yeah, more. I kind of like that. Yeah. His eyes go. Yeah, like, the red bags under his them. eyes yeah. are fucking great. Yeah, and, and he's it's, got those wide open staring. This is very inconsistent scene to scene. Like someone's <laughs> just like he's just like straight up purple face. And yeah, she's like, oh, oh is, he, is he still sick or is he cool now? Yeah. But I think the the strength. I mean, I I still like that movie, but I think it. It runs long, you know, in the tooth. Uh, and that's the only thing I have against it. I guess my interest isn't at peak level throughout the Vertilac. No. But I think, you know, with restructuring of it, you know, which, again, is I'm advocating changing the movie. But I think, yeah, for myself, that one strains my uh, uh, attention span. And, and to be honest, it was the one I was worried about bringing this movie tonight. I'm like, I think the telephone is okay. The Vertilac's going to lose them. And then hopefully the drop of water will do what I hope. <laughs> And seal the deal for the end of the movie. It's which, so American, Colin. Yeah, the the drop of water <laughs> I think is one of I, uh, I I like I said before one of the most perfectly realized short twenty minute horror films ever made. Absolutely. And I think because of its inclusion Solid. in this, it makes the whole movie a classic. It's like you know because what is there is good enough if you have the patience, I guess, to make it through the Vertilac, which is not <laughs> like I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying you have to have it's you have to have more patience with it. Because yeah. there's some creepy shit. Like, Bava keeps doing that, you know, like, uh, characters move through planes of lighting. Like, they're on rollers yeah. or something as they're coming close to the camera. He does this in The Whip and the Body with Christopher Lee where he's a ghost. And, you know, it's like it's it's he it goes through, like, the green, then the blue, then the red fades up. And it's just they're staring directly into the camera lens. It's really creepy. The 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 people at the windows you know, he uses in Kill Baby Kill. Uh, Mario Bava is one of my favorite all time filmmakers. Uh, I don't think he. I think he is one of those genius filmmakers who can do um, every job on a film crew. Like this guy started off as a cameraman and uh, became a director, but he can also do special effects in. Um, Danger Diabolic, which we watch, and you should go back and listen to that podcast. I mean, he's pulling stuff off with foreground miniatures and making like a big, what's supposed to be like a big spy movie with like toys. He doesn't have, he doesn't have the money, but he's putting things in front of the camera and shooting through them. And, you know, just the way that he was able to compose an image to give the illusion. He's like a, a you know, magician with, uh, with the film. Uh, and he's, like I said, he's done comedies, he's done science fiction movies, Planet of the Vampires and others, uh, Hercules movies, uh, Was slasher movie Planet films. of the Vampires? Oh, yeah. It's the movie that kind of inspired Dan O'Bannon to do Alien, I think. And Ridley Scott's never seen it, but I'm sure Dan O'Bannon has. That's right. they find a distress beacon, land on Ooh. a planet. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, a very colorful movie. So, yeah, I think you should check out. I, th- I think this is my favorite Mario Bob movie. Oh, damn. So my second favorite might be Blood on Black Lace, uh, or Danger Diabolic actually probably yeah, is. Say, but like um, yeah, I really like that movie. So I, I recommend checking out the filmography, the select filmography of uh, Mario Bava. Uh, Shutter I think has all of his greatest hits. You should check that out. Shutter.com. 
Uh, this is not like a paid sponsorship. I just didn't recommend it. it. But, but if Shutter's he, listening, if Shutter's listening. <laughs> we keep on talking just about Screen saying. Factory. You got to go to Shutter. Somebody sponsor us. Come on. Yeah. So uh, it's a definite recommendation for Black Sabbath and Happy Halloween. I think this is a perfect uh, uh, Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. Happy it's Halloween. A perfect Halloween type movie. Uh, we were going to talk really <laughs> quick about the uh, the end of the movie is uh, that's in the Italian version, not the American cut is one of the first that I remember ever seeing, like earliest, I guess, not that I saw in my life, but in film, 1963, where they show the artifice of making, of movie making. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. At the end, this is the thing that Holly said kind of broke the, the movie, but it's it, it's Boris Karloff on horseback, and as the camera pulls away, as he's saying, you know, see you later, think yeah. of me. You see all the camera, or the guys running around with the, yeah, the all the branches, prop crew with branches, <laughs> yeah. running past the camera, yeah. the motorized horse, the the what's that thing called that projects the uh, the light it's on a, the cyclorama? No, yeah, it's yeah. A, uh, uh, that thing. Yeah, 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 yeah the, the thing. Right? But that to me is like that's the host of a thing going happy Halloween yeah. as he leaves. Yeah, like, right. like, that's yeah, it. Right. I feel like any other time it would have been charming, but for me I was just like oh. Yeah, this was. You didn't leave with the fear of the. Uh, like, I think it's scary. It made summer. it less it like, scary. Yeah, it made it less scary. Yeah. I, I think, think that's if, the uh, point. Don't yeah. take any of this seriously, right. folks. It's just a movie. Well, right. right. I mean, it's I think, only a movie. I think if Boris had a little bit more of like an MC role throughout our. Sure. That's right. exactly I, it. If we revisit him more, that if is he, the American it, version. We're gonna have yeah. to take a look at oh, some of that. Sure. Right. Might yeah. have to. He's like between each one has a little bit between each one. That's exactly it. Yeah. Cutting a dumb joke or something. Right. <laughs> like, because then that makes sense of that ending. Yeah, yeah. Well, that ending is No, you know what it is. He does, it does that without that ending, and the Italian one who doesn't have that then does have this oh, ending. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's kind of yeah. weird yeah. to juxtapose. It you know be. what it was that got me? As I was like, oh, that was really good, and I'm like, wait, no, more Vertilac? No. Uh, what? Yeah. I thought there should be another yes. Vertilac piece. Yes. I was pissed. Yes, I was like, no, not more. <laughs> That's what it was. That's exactly what it was. I'm with you. Gotcha. Otherwise, so I find so that whole like, like, be careful on your way home. Today. I love that shit. I think it's great. But this, yeah. I th- I thought there was more Vertilac coming. That's uh, why. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, yep. <laughs> I like the Vertilac, Sean. I like it more than they do. I'm, I'm not quite been, where like, you are. but two more cuts yeah. of Boris just being a yuck between yep. the things. Right. Like, that he was in the good. beginning. Yep, you're exactly I, I, right. It would have been, That's been the perfect. Right, like, after the telephone, he's like, mm, yes. And then he hangs up a phone and then talks exactly. to the audience. Yeah. Something like that. He does. Does he? Are you kidding? What? Actually do it? I think. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, all right, Americans got something we'll watch, right. We'll watch That's some of these what I needed. Guys. Just like pops up yeah. from the side of the camera, like, oh. Hey yeah. guys, I oh. see you're still yes. here or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. John it's, Carpenter yes. and body bags, basically. Yeah. As if it's That's like right. a Disney special or something. Right. Yeah, yeah. I we love need like that. A, more of an event to watch. We need like a yeah. hybrid kind of cut of these yeah, that's, two yeah. versions. Hot Colin, that's uh, yeah. well yes. because there are there are like little outtakes. Like some of the cuts are different yeah. too. Like throughout, especially in the Vertilac, there's moments that I'm like, that wasn't there. Like I don't think you see Alabek's head. Like oh, in full really? view, yeah. There's no, like a bunch really. of little changes like that, so that's why I'm like, I think the Italian version is better, but you know, it's still like a matter. I and mean, that's like yeah. one of the only re- redeemable parts of the Vertilac to me was him tossing that dude's head on the floor, <laughs> and then the next shot, it's like dangling in the wind yeah, by his yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's well, uh, <laughs> that's the uh, the Black Sabbath our, uh, and Happy Halloween. And next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? We're taking it back to the 90s. Okay. I think it's the 90s. We love the 90s. <laughs> we're going to be watching Urban Legend. Urban oh! Legend. Oh, we're fi- okay, we're finally watching it. I oh! promise I won't change my mind to a Halloween movie this time. <laughs> I have never seen Urban Legend. What? Oh, shit. Michaela, <laughs> you're not coming back next week. Oh! <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't like... Uh, I'm not sure Michaela, because I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just got He's so oh, serious. <laughs> he just mic dropped again. I know, yeah. We yeah, miss you, Michaela. I think he was serious. <laughs> uh, okay, so until then, uh, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.